Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to bring you my 4K video editing beast. Uh, I'm going to show you all the parts that offer the best bang for buck uh, and I'm going to show you how to install those parts in the computer so that you can build your very own 4K editing computer, the same as mine. Uh, I'm going to explain the parts and I'm going to show you how to install them, how to create your own computer step by step uh, and then at the end we're going to test it in DaVinci Resolve 16 to see how it performs. So stay tuned. Okay, so first up you're going to want to decide whether you're going to go with an Intel or AMD uh, chipset. At the moment for 4K video editing, AMD are pretty hard to beat with their new Ryzen 7 chips. So on this build I've gone for an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X processor and the reason for that is that it gives you 8 cores and 16 threads uh, uh, and it's a fairly reasonably priced part at around about £300. If you drop down to the next level of a Ryzen 7 processor, you're going to drop down to 6 cores. And if you go up a level to the 3900X, uh, you're going to be paying about 40% more for 12 cores and 24 threads. So the 3700X offers very good value for money at the moment while still giving you excellent performance. I've teamed this up with a Gigabyte Aorus Elite X570 motherboard. The reason that I've gone for the X570 is because it's the latest chipset, so it future-proofs it a little bit. Uh, you can also use the previous generation of motherboards if you flash the BIOS, uh, and they are a little bit cheaper. But this one here offers pretty good value for money. Uh, at about 10,000 pesos or about 140 pounds. I've teamed it up with 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM, 3000 megahertz. You could go for a faster speed of RAM. You could also get away with 32 gigabytes, uh, but I think 64 is worth paying for to future proof it. I've added in two SSD drives. One is an M2 solid state drive and one is a standard 2.5 inch solid state drive. So we're just going to take a quick look at the motherboard now once you've opened it up and familiarize yourself with the parts. Along the bottom here you can see all the USB headers and a lot of headers for your uh, audio and your power switches. We have a PCI Express 4 slot here uh, and up here is the PCI Express 16 slot which is the fast one that we're going to install the uh, graphics card into. We have an M2 memory slot here which will house your M2 SSD drive. Here is the processor socket, which is where we will mount the Ryzen 7 3700X processor. And here we have four DIMM slots for the RAM. Uh, be sure to check how many DIMM slots your motherboard holds. And also here we're going to have the power slots for the motherboard and for the fans. And on the back here we have uh, all the USB mounts and ports along with uh, LAN, internet and various other connections. So once you've uh, familiarized yourself with the motherboard, you're going to go ahead and install the processor. Uh, the Ryzen 7 processors actually come with thermal paste pre-installed, which was news to me. Um, so you don't have to buy any extra thermal paste uh, and the thermal paste will just be used to make a good contact between the CPU and the fan. Uh, if you need to get some, it's just like this here that I'm showing you now. So let's go ahead and install the processor. Uh, when you open up the processor, and this goes for any processors, you'll see that there are markings uh, that is slightly different in one corner. Here you can see in the bottom right corner there's a gold triangle, which is different to the other three corners. And what we're going to do is we're going to match that up on the processor socket. You can see in the top left corner there is also a triangle there. So you're going to match up the two triangles, the one from the processor and the one from the uh, processor socket. There's also a little latch here. If you just open up the latch, uh, that's basically a locking mechanism for the processor. So once you have mounted the processor, you're going to pull that down and uh, lock it into place. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so it's really this simple, guys. That's the processor chip and you're just going to Line up the two marked corners, as I said before, and you're going to hold it gently over the socket and you're just going to drop it into place. Very gently, but it's very simple. It only goes in one way. And we'll just pull down the latch here, the locking mechanism, click it under, and that is literally it. Your processor is now securely mounted. Okay, so once we've done this, we're going to go ahead and get the fan and install that. The Ryzen 7 uh, processors come with a pretty decent fan stock, so you don't need to purchase a new one. 
And to install the fan, it really is just a case of lining it up on the processor so that these two metal bars are lined up with the two hook mechanisms here. And you're going to pull the latch down, the metal latch down, and hook it under. And then you're going to move this lever from the left to the right, uh, and that will secure the fan in place. Then we just need to plug in the fan uh, power lead, uh, which goes in there. As you can see now, the processor and the fan are securely mounted. Uh, that's in place. So next up, we're going to move on to installing the M2 SSD drive. You can see here there's a little notch on the right hand side. It will only go in one way. Uh, when we look at the mount here, it lines up. There's a large section and a small section and it lines up and corresponds with the notch on the M2 drive. All you have to do is slide the M2 drive into the connector here. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. You can see that I've installed the M2 SSD drive. Uh, there's a heat sink on uh, top of mine. There might not be on yours, so we can just screw it down via the heat sink uh, on the left hand side here. You just screw that down and it's securely in place. If your motherboard doesn't have a heat sink, there's a little notch on the SSD drive where you can screw the SSD drive in directly. We already have the processor and the uh, SSD drive installed. Next up, we're going to move on and install the RAM. Again, the RAM will only install it one way. Uh, the little notch in the middle of the RAM is not in a central position. It is offset to one side. So you just have to line that up with the DIMM slots uh, and literally you can install it only in one way. So I, you can see I've installed two sticks of RAM so far. Make sure that these little uh, locking mechanisms are open when you install the RAM and just give it a gentle squeeze down and you'll feel it click into place. It's really simple to install. Uh, just don't apply too much pressure. It should just click into place nicely. You can see here that it's got, mine's got a heat sink on again. That's just gonna make the RAM perform a little bit better and keep it a little bit cooler. It's much better uh, to build a PC like this than to be upgrading a laptop every two or three years if you don't need the laptop because I can just upgrade the individual parts. So now you can see this is my case. Uh, I bought this as, uh, for £40 off Amazon UK. Uh, it's fairly cheap, so it's about 2,500 pesos. It comes with a bunch of fans at the front, dust filter here at the top, which uh, is covering two more fans on top. So it should be able to keep the processor and all the components cool enough. Uh, the uh, side of the case, uh, we're just going to undo those thumb screws here and, and then you'll be able to mount the motherboard inside the case. So you can see I've opened up the case here. All the wiring inside is for the fans. Uh, we have here a space for 3.5 inch standard hard drives. We also have mounting points up here where you're going to screw in your SSD drive. Uh, and then all we're going to do is line up the holes in the motherboard with these little pins here and we're going to seat the motherboard onto these pins uh, and we're going to then screw the motherboard down so that it is mounted in place. As long as your motherboard lines up with these uh, screws, then it should mount securely. Okay, so as you can see, I've had to slide off the rear side of the case here because all the cabling is hidden in this side. So just go through and look what cabling you have here. It will come with a bunch of screws that will help you to mount uh, hard drives, SSD drives, uh, and also to uh, possibly mount the motherboard. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the motherboard in place now, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now go ahead and screw uh, the motherboard down uh, to securely mount it in place so it's attached to the case uh, and everything is secure. This case uh, has a lot of fans and wires, uh, so it is a little bit awkward. It was a bit tight to um, fit everything in place properly, particularly because of the wiring from the fans and also at the back, it was quite a tight fit to get your uh, ports out the back. So now to install the graphics card, we're gonna go back to that PCI Express 16 slot and you're just gonna gently lower the graphics card into place. And on the back of the case, you'll have to remove a couple, a couple of these uh, and then screw it into place. Once everything's set up, uh, we'll be installing a power lead into the graphics card as well to power it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll install my Wi-Fi card in one of the PCI slots. The PSU that you buy is pretty important. Uh, I've gone for a Corsair 750 watt gold standard and gold standard means that the 
PSU is more efficient. It will use less electricity in the end. This one is semi-modular, so you can choose which wires you're going to use, so you only have to use the wires that are necessary. It's not going to make a mess of your case. So I've now installed the PSU. This case, unfortunately, everything is a little bit tight. Uh, there's a slight design flaw. Um, you can see the PSU goes in the bottom here, and this here houses the uh, standard 3.5 inch drives. The issue is, is when you put a 3.5 inch drive in there, and once you've put in the PSU, the 3.5 inch drives are going to be stuck. So that's not a great design feature there. Uh, also, the wiring is going to be an issue because there's quite a tight slot and I can fit it up in various points, um, but it's not ideal. It would be better if they just removed this part here because it will give you more airflow and more accessibility to do your wiring. So just bear that in mind when you're buying a case. I bought online so I couldn't see the internals uh, when I actually purchased it. You can always work around it though. Okay, so I have the wiring all set up. I'm just going to install the main motherboard power connector in here. It will be the largest connector. So that just clicks in there. Just check the slots. Just check the orientation. Uh, and then this will be the CPU, the, the processor's power connector. It goes right up here in the corner on my motherboard, um, but it may be in different places on yours. The issues that I'm having with this case, and also there's a lot of heat sinks on this motherboard, is I literally couldn't fit the power supply plug into the socket. So I've had to go ahead and remove one of these fans that was at the rear here. Shouldn't make any difference really, because I still have plenty of fans in this case, but just beware, you might have to move things around and play around with things to get it everything working in the correct way. Okay, so everything is pretty much installed now. Uh, you can see that I've mounted the SSD drive in the top right corner. You're gonna have to uh, plug in a SATA cable and also uh, a power cable to that SSD drive and hook it up to the SATA connectors on your uh, motherboard and also use a power cable from your power supply Okay, so the cables need a little bit of tidying up. We'll go through and do that now, but everything is pretty much in place as of now. All that's left to do is fire it up and see uh, whether everything starts up. Whee! So everything works perfectly. I started it up first time, uh, everything came on, it booted up. Uh, so now I'm just gonna install uh, Windows 10 and then we'll go into DaVinci Resolve 16 and we'll check out the performance. Okay, so you should be able to see my timeline here. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and go into the Deliver tab. And we'll just set this up and call it Test. And we'll set up for uh, YouTube 4K video. Uh, we'll change that from QuickTime to MP4 though. And we'll add that to the render queue. And now on the right hand side up here, we're gonna start the render. And it's a 13 minute clip, remember? So let's have a look at the render time on that. I'm just gonna let you zoom in. And now we have to see the render time. So at the moment it's telling me the render time for a 13 minute 4K clip with uh, transitions and a LUT applied is going to be around about nine minutes. Uh, this would not have been possible on my old laptop. A Lenovo IdeaPad 320 17 inch version with a quad core i7 8th generation processor, the 8550U. Uh, it has a dedicated graphics card on it. It had an SSD hard drive on it and it just still was not possible. Uh, in fact, I didn't even shoot 4K video because the laptop just stuttered on everything. Even with a 1080 timeline on that laptop, um, I had to uh, generate optimized media and even then playback was stuttering. And if I added even things such as basic titles to the timeline, it just killed it. Uh, it would come up with warnings that the GPU was running out of RAM or it ran out of RAM. So for me, this is perfect. So I've got to wait 10 minutes to render a 13 minute video. That's 
pretty pretty good performance and money well spent in my opinion because now I can just be much more productive with my time and video editing now has become a pleasure rather than a chore. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video guys, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you do like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, you just quickly click on that subscribe button, it's really easy to do. Uh, really appreciate it guys, thanks for taking the time to watch this uh, and I'll be back with some more videos soon.